Battlefield of Eternity, the first map in the grand final, qualifier number three for the x Cup winter. All right, guys, I'm hyped. Team, wah, they are awesome. Team Ash, they did a great job so far. The semifinal in particular was way closer than I expected, honestly. But at this point, I'm really looking forward to this. And at the same time, I gotta say, the blue team is obviously the favorite. They're going to Miami to represent Europe at the uh, uh, Defrost LAN. If you don't know what that is, if you live in the US and you want to attend the event, the entire thing takes place at the first weekend of February, 5th and 6th of February to be exact. And you just have to Google for Heroes of the Storm, Miami Defrost LAN, and you're going to find out all about the event and uh, the tournament. I'm going to be there. I'm actually going to fly out a couple of days before. And now that we're heading into our game today we get of course another glimpse of the team that is going to represent europe there since most of the teams will be american yeah, at the same time now that we're here in the grand final for team ash it's already amazing that they made it to the grand final they locked some extra points in for the standings keep in mind that the entire system around the x cup is meant to give the teams opportunities to participate in a couple of the of the qualifiers they don't have to play in all of them you just try to gather points by going as deep in the tournament as you can those are being accumulated from tournament to tournament and after the season the top eight make it to the playoffs where the players play for four thousand euros of prize money as so often i want to point out once again that the entire event is privately sponsored by a heroes of the storm fan that wants to stay anonymous our mr x and we're of course going to respect that wish and i want to give a big big thank you to mr x again because not only were we able to run the x cup uh, this is the third season of the x cup that we're running X Cup Summer, Fall and Winter, and it is pretty incredible. So once again, we have another awesome couple of weeks with more Heroes of the Storm tournaments here in Europe. And that leads us to matches like this one. The Grand Final, the Best of Three series for the qualifier. Again, as we're heading into the playoffs, it's going to be a lot of Best of Fives, a double elimination bracket as well. We currently have Rega as our first pick. Stukov was banned. And now we get Li Ming as an early pick, plus Garrosh. Every single time you see a Garrosh on Battlefield of Eternity, you immediately need... There's alarm bells ringing. And one of the first things that you're thinking about is like, yeah, we might have to ban Zarya here. Because that can be tricky. If you have the speed barrier on Garrosh with level 4... Ooh. Oh, I'm talking about Masquerade and Dino with Tracer Tyrell again. That reminds me actually of the series that they played in the semi-final. Dino with his Tracer is pretty solid there. So, well. Ban on Zarya, yes or no? That's the question. Not from them. They are banning Hogger, but it's up to team wah, what they want to do now. Because Garrosh is always the one where you want to be like, eh. But they go for the Lucio ban. Do we get it? Azaria together with Garrosh, are they trying to go for the Truth and try combo or are we going to get a very different move here? Morenas and Bishops, Bishops oftentimes played Hanzo, Hanzo is also still up, could be played by him. Sylvanas is his second go-to. And they still need that side laner as well. Blaze is banned, there's Urel for them as a side laner. And we get Brightwing. Okay, Brightwing as a pick. The Fruit Fly makes it into the game. And the last two, it's from Grotta and Ultralisk. Hanzo! Ona! Already said that. And Swam Grotta for the sideliner. What's it gonna be? Rexa. Alright. Hanzo for the damage, together with Tracer. And the final pick for Bishops. That's a bit of a question mark pick now. I'm, to be honest, a bit surprised that they didn't pick Hanzo earlier. I really thought that Bishops would lock him in immediately. Maybe we're going to get Sylvanas now, unless they decide to really combo something off with Garrosh, which they technically still could do, but not sure. So, let's see what they're going to get. Uh, da, 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 da. Cassia! All right. As in the last game of the semi-final, it's Cassia. Battlefield of Eternity, everybody. Game number one in the grand final of qualifier number three. We got Team wah, going up against Team Ash. Game number one in the best of three with Masquerade on Tyrell. Banana H on Rega. We got Dino on Tracer. Swamp Grotta on Rexa. 
and Ultralisk on Hanzo. The right side of the map, Team Ash with Renella on Brightwing. We got Morenas on Urel. We have Bishops on Cassia, Denado on Garrosh. And Maitrai is playing Li Ming. Good combos. Which team is going to take the lead? Team, wah, they are the crazy team. They are the ones that will travel to the US to represent Europe at the Miami Defrost LAN. Level 1, by the way. In this case, we got the Force Armor, and <laughs> that's a kill. Or maybe not. Maybe not. They want him. They might get him. They body block him. Denado, boy. That one took ages, and they lose Teriel. Now, this is probably the best that Team Ash could hope for here, because after Garrosh got caught, it was pretty inevitable that he would die. But they could trade a 1v1. This is a nice start into all of this. But yeah, team wah, with the quick kill. But Masquerade dies at the same time. Top lane now. We got Rexa. Even Tracer is moving in. Trying to get some extra damage in against Morenas. Was already forced to tap the fountain. And down to the bottom of the map. There's the next play. Yeah, Denado. Just flipping one target out real quickly. And let's go. For the people that paid attention, by the way, I highlighted this in the semi-final, but I want to say it again. This is obviously not the normal lineup that we have for Team Wah. Uh, they have subs today playing for them. This is not the lineup that will go to Miami, not all of them. But yeah, Nagrom, Iquaza, they're all going to be there. So the plan, at least. But for now, up at the top, they're going for Morenas again. And this time, he might not be able to make it out. But he has to jump. And Brightwing is there too. So, here we go. A kill versus a kill. Level 3 on both sides. The first camp's taken. The usual spiel in the early game on Battlefield of Eternity as we're kicking this series off. We have also on level 1. Again, no stacks, but the charge strikes. Ultralisk gets already pinged here a little bit. This team has been known to troll around quite a bit. And that has been very evident also in the semi-final. question is, what are they going to do here? The pressure at the bot lane might even result in them being able to take one of the towers down because there's only a two-man defense set up. Red team is trying to do some damage at the top. And I can I think at this point we can scratch the try because they're doing work here. Li Ming with a bit more poking can take that tower down for sure. Whereas down here, they haven't gone quite as far. They're trying to lay one more trap. They even rotate over. They go for bishops, and that's some good damage from Dino. Obviously not enough to net them a kill yet, especially with Brightwing also moving in. And that's one of the things that Dino has to be careful about. Whenever Brightwing comes in, the polybomb is not going to be far. So ensure that you're not going to get CC'd six days to Sunday there. But the first tower is about to fall. Could move from Urel, but since there's nobody else to help her out, there's just no chance of one of them dying. Now over here, we already got our little move. We got another camp moving down to the bottom of the map. As you can tell, there's the play for the first Immortal, and both teams are currently going for it. Yeah, they make a play for Denardo. All right. Might just be another kill, but Masquerade is also in a bit of a pickle, especially since Brightwing is going for the CC again. <laughs> okay, they're moving back on this one, but oh boy. Yeah, Denado's moving in. Bot lane has already suffered some damage. Halftime show has been hit. The red team is the one uh, that lost the Immortal thus far. And it doesn't really seem like they want to try and make a play here. Instead, they're going for the race. So they're trying to reduce the shield amount that the Immortal is going to have. Yeah! Gets immediately pinged. Swam Grotta gets stunned and immediately pinged by his teammates. Like, yeah, we saw that. We saw it too. So... <laughs> and he gets killed for it! Oh my god. For just a second, yeah, Denado is also capitalizing on the misp uh, on the positioning here. Raxa goes down and that sh sh shuts pretty much the entire push down. Now they can push a little bit because Urel is still at the bottom of the map, but that was a neat move from Team Ash. So yeah, well done. It will still get some damage topside, but I don't think they can go for the fort now. Considering the circumstances. Obviously, Rexa is back, but he's now moving down to the bot lane. They take the wall down. The towers are both gone. No damage on the foot, though. Level 7 for both sides. 
And some extra damage here to you. Already bot lane. Rex is making his way in. Dainu is really trying to piss off Morenas. And if Misha gets a stun here, that might even lead to a kill. But they take the wall down, so that's some extra damage that they can structurally do. Bot side. Morenas and everybody's already pinging. It's like, yeah, boys, I'll need a little bit of help here. Are we gonna eat some damage on the fort? But I think it's inevitable at this point. They try and take, go for the camp, which they can. But now down here, there's the stun. And they might get a kill if this continues. Uh, Dino is low enough that's not going to happen with Brightwing available. That, of course, changes things also. Misha is the one that falls. But the Ford has still taken some damage. So it's the usual early game back and forth. But now they're really trying to go for a commitment here. Brightwing doesn't have her blink heal available. Or a blink available. He wanted to. At the top, some counter pressure. I like what Team Ash is doing here. The early game is pretty decent for them. They're doing work. Doing the best they can. Get a little bit of a hit here too. And Masquerade is now going towards the top. Was actually about to intercept Bishop. So I think Bishops might have seen that coming. Or was I, or it was communicated in voice that there's a chance someone rotates up and uh, he therefore went towards the top because if he continues, he might just be completely blocked into the damage of the incoming players. And that could have netted them a kill just before the Immortals are spawning. Obviously the worst time for that to happen. But here's Immortal phase number two. Uh, Immortal about to touch ground. Both teams not on level 10 yet. Getting a little bit closer here. Everything focuses on the red team's Immortal again, and they're already losing ground there. That Immortal is already down 20-30% of the HP, and Morena's careful, there's the kill. Dino with his Tracer, showing no mercy. They go for my try, and they kill him too. That's two more kills for the blue team, and they're not done yet. They go for Bishops, that's another one. Bishops is dead. And they even hope for kills underneath the fort against Denado or Brightwing. They kill Brightwing. Maybe even a five-man wipe. They don't go that deep. Masquerade. He's even sanking it up. He has level 10 and he sanks it up. The team is moving in again with another stun thanks to Misha. And it seems like Denado is also going to bite the dust. The final player goes down. Six kills to two. More than a level ahead. They go for the fort. But Hanzo is the only one still dealing with the Immortal. The halftime show is obviously already over. Masquerade a bit low. Rega went into Bloodlust. And they take the top fort. Hanzo isn't done with the Immortal yet. So they have to move back for now. But they still got level 10 abilities. The window might not be big enough because they have to move back and tap the fountain. At least a few of them do. But the lead that they're running here. Oh boy. Level 10 on both sides now. So at this point we got again the wave of force. Ball of lightning. Arden defender. The standard. The huge. But still the big lead now. On the side of the blue team. Oh immortal. Immortal hit into Misha's done. Denado was in trouble for a second. They're focusing on Morenas again. Everybody has his ult up still, with the exception of Teriel. He's the only one that doesn't have his cooldown up. Tracer is already escorting another wave in at the bot lane fort, and that includes the Shaman camp. So he rallies to move down. The big arrow in the choke point. And they're losing at least Denardo. Denardo is dead. Bishops is too far out. Likely going to be punished too. Tracer in trouble though, thanks to Brightwing, but the fight isn't over yet. They're moving in for Brightwing, they take down Cassia together with a Fruit Fly, and they're going for Morenas. The Immortal is taken, and they just drop nearly everybody on the side of Team Ash. One kill after another, they're now two levels ahead, and they can easily go for the bottom. I was about to say bottom fort, but that's already gone, and the Immortal isn't even here yet. That's a big shield too. Yeah, they are just outclassing them. Team Ash, until level 10 they did well. The Master Taunts everywhere. This team is a huge team of trolls. And they're going for it. Level 13 talent advantage, big immortal. They go for the bot lane. Denado is low, gets saved by Brightwing. It's a five versus four. Since Urel is up at the top, try to make sure that the second keep doesn't get opened up either. But this is bad news for Team Ash. They're getting absolutely murdered here. Cassia is down, and it is a huge pain train that is coming their way. Team wah, is going through Team Ash like hot butter through cheese as they're going for the bottom. The arrow is missing, but they're still trying to go for the fight. 
they're still trying to go for the kill. They're isolating Denardo and they take him down. Denardo is gone. Brightwing is about to escape, but then Ultralisk says, nope. not on my watch, goes in, gets the kill, and nine minutes, ten minutes in, they're moving in for the victory on the core. They are taking it. The core goes down. Ten-minute game as Team Wah locks in the first map win against Team Ash at the Grand Final. GG and well played. Before we head into game number two, make sure that you subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it yet so you don't miss out on any future content here on Calder TV. Tumble Spider Queen, the second map of the series. The lead for the blue team as they went for a 10 minute victory on Battlefield of Eternity. So uh, let's uh, go. Let's see what we're getting this time. We are on Tomb. Very, very different ball game now, of course. And. Yeah, I'm a bit curious. A again, as we've seen before, there were always a couple of like weird picks for Team Rap whenever they got ahead, especially on Tomb of the Spider Queen. They love to play Dainu on Asmodan. I think that happened now three, four times or something along those lines. But yeah, in comes the uh, quick pay uh, ban on Tracer. Apparently, they got enough of Dainu. So there's that. And Stukov gets banned as well. Now. I honestly wonder if at some point we're going to have teams that even ban out some of those picks that they're using on Tomb of the Spider Queen all the time. I would not be surprised in the slightest if Team Bar is going for another Asmodan pick for Dino. Uh, I, I don't see... Wait, now that I think about it, it was Ultralist that played him in, in uh, the semi-final, right? So yeah, there's definitely a chance that they're going to do it again. These guys, they like to troll it. You can't really blame them for it, on the other hand. They are very dominant in the European scene right now. But they got punished for it in the past. They had actually a couple of matches where they were trolling a little bit too much. Not taking some of the games all that serious. And uh, then all of a sudden their opponents stepped it up a notch in those games. And were able to close out a victory in a best of three against Team Rah. So there's always that problem. If you think you are just really, really strong and you take it a little bit too lightly. Then yeah, then there's that. But okay, so we got Jojo banned. Uh, Jojo is getting banned time and time again here. Rega also. Blaze as a first pick. <laughs> Valera and Anduin. All right. That escalated quickly. On the first picks as well. This is always one of the weird ones when a team comes in and picks something like Valera this early. Yeah, that's kind of nuts. Valera this early. in the Valera is a pick that is not going to get contested in any way. So, picking her late is not a problem, but they are showcasing already what they want to do here. And once again, we get Mitra and Lunara and Inubarak. So the Inubarak and Blaze composition, true and tried, powerful, has been strong for years and years and years. <laughs> I don't want to see what the blue team is now going to do after the bans. Because if you already open up with a Valera pick, I mean, you're literally just telling them, um, yeah. Counter it. Try and counter it. Do your worst. So, off we go. And also Anduin together with that, which is Light Bomb, obviously, as a combo. More supports are getting banned out. I mean, especially since they already have their own support, there's that. <laughs> Team Ash is hesitating, and they're going for the Leo ban. Okay. No Leoric against them this time. And well, come on, I'm curious. Go for it, baby. Are we? Are they gonna play out the rest normally, like proper heroes being picked, or do we get a, another, another curveball? Hogger and Stitches. <laughs> All right, Stitches played. Yeah, fair enough. I mean, Masquerade at least should go for the stacks and try to get an extra big hit point pool. That would be kind of funny. I still maintain, by the way, that the Teddy Bear Stitches is the ugliest Stitcher skin or one of the ugliest Stitcher skins that you could go for. In theory, initially, it sounds good, but I think that skin is just horrible. Absolutely horrible. Stitches has a couple of really, really good skins. So going for that weird Teddy Bear thingy is just a no-go. Uther has a support, and we got Sylvanas. So Lunara Sylvanas. Yeah, with Blaze and Uberag, a lot of stuns for them. Slows in addition to that too. And now the last one, Ultralisk. 
what follows up on a stitch's hook. Because I can tell you one thing, it's not gonna be Anduin. Come on, Ultralisk. Gul'dan! Alright! Two minutes Spider Queen. We got Gul'dan, we got Valera, and we got the Stitches, everybody. Let's get the show on the road. Game number two in the grand final of the third qualifier for the X Cup Winter. Here we go! Dino playing Valera. Yeah, we have a Valera in the game. First pick two. And Banana H on Andun. It's from Gorota on Hoga and Ultralisk on Gul'dan in our second game of this Best of Three series at the Grand Final. We have Masquerade on Stitches. And on the right side, Team Ash with Mitri on Lulnara, Denado on Anubarak, Morenas on Blaze, Renella on Uther, and Bishops is playing Sylvanas. Okay, time to shine. Especially time to uh, double check what's happening here with Valera and what she can do. Obviously, we also got Ultralisk here and Gul'dan. It's going to be interesting. Oink, oink. Swam so Grotta with a big mount. Uh oh. That's the first hit. <laughs> is he going to die? Where's the heal? <laughs> and he's dead. And Nuborak is dead. The poor beetle. Poor Beetle already getting murdered here, but he's maybe not the only one. No! Ultralisk dies too. A kill for a kill. It's party time. Alright, let's get the show started. And down at the bottom of the map, we might see Dainu get crushed. Actually, he's in real trouble here, isn't he? Dainu, and he gets out. But Swam Grotta, yeah, he needs to use Google Maps navigation because he is on the wrong side. I mean, he would have known where. No way. Ah, oh, come on. <laughs> Please die. Thank you. Thank you. That would have been quite the escape. Can you imagine him getting away here? Completely on the wrong side and then he's able to get out. They take the camp too. Stitches, by the way. This is, by the way, why uh, his nickname is No Balls Masquerade. Because he went for the patchwork creation instead of the Hungry for More. Didn't go for the stacks. You know, he could have gone for the big hit point pool. He decided not to. And, yeah, this is just kind of sad. Uh, talking about... I try against Dai. I mean, Dino. I want to keep a bit of an eye on him. I really want to see what he can do with his uh, with his Valera. But this is one of those picks that you normally don't see, and you don't see her for a reason. Same time now, the bot lane is already opened up. The entire wall is gone. I don't know what it is with these Tomb of the Spider Queen games that we have lately, but every single time it seems like nobody is able to defend their walls before the objective comes down. Yeah, Morena's already gone. Masquerade was even attacked here. Used Devour to heal himself up a little bit. And Dino is doing a lot of running right now. A yeah, lot of running for him. Might try again with some extra damage. And the slow, obviously, doesn't do Valera any favors either. On level 4, we now got the, rel the Relentless Strikes. And the Crippling Poison on level 1. Camps are taken. It's a little bit of a slower start. I mean, initially it started to go pop off a bit with a double kill that we had. Or that kill for kill trade. But right now things are slowing down a bit. They're trying to go for Lulnara. The hook is being dodged out. Nicely done by my try. I saw that coming, obviously. It's going to be more crazy when Masquerade hits his level 13 so that the hook range gets extended. And he can play around with that. In the meantime, Dino is just attempting to set up some traps here. The one thing that I might should probably highlight is that Ultralis doesn't get a lot of stacks together so far. We're only three minutes in, but he has three stacks. That's not really a lot. He's able to pop it up to five, but he wants to complete that quest, obviously, by the time that he hits 16. So he can immediately synergize it with the Ruinous Affliction. Uh, same time now. Yeah, 46 and 45 gems. Both teams pretty much don't lose any yet. Uh, Dino to move out. Masquerade realizes that he's in a bit of a pickle, maybe. But he's able to walk out of this one, too. So they see... They, they're having both teams in a position where they can now start to turn in. Definitely have enough gems already for the blue team. Uh, sorry, for the red team. And the blue team will follow in a second. And then they can start their turn ins here. See who gets the first web weaver wave. Level 7 kicks in a few seconds earlier for Team Ash. Already a little bit of ping spamming happening over here. Bottom of the map. Yeah, they go for Dino again. <laughs> and again, Dino is doing a lot of running in this one. Alright. Is able to dash out. And is once again able to escape. But... 
Valera in general is not really doing a whole lot of chasing and assassinating just yet. More often than not, it's actually Dino that has to run away from them. So, I'm not quite sure how much value that Valera pick brought them so far. That changed though, because here's the kill. They get the hook and then Valera is ready and Lulnara gets killed. Bambi as dead as... yeah, as can be. Bambi got dropped as quickly as Blizzard dropped HTC. Playing hot potato over here. Two kills to two. Turn in attempts. There's the silence. They go for Blaze. And he's dead too. Double kill. Oh, the hook attempt. But he's able to get out. But now, of course, the turn in point is fully available to them. They can move in and start to get that hit. Bishops is interrupting as best he can. Banana a little bit low here. Valera down at the bottom of the map. Yeah, and here we go. Bernardo also moving out. Same time now, Swamp Grotta attempted to turn in but couldn't, but the rest of the team was able to deliver at the top turn in point. So that's the first Webweaver wave in this game for the blue team. Another blind took attempt. This one was also followed up by the rest of the team, but they didn't get lucky. I can always try, right? If you get a lucky hook there, that's going to be incredible for you. But now we're having uh, the push through the mid and top lane. They're setting up top side already as they burn down another minion wave and the wall is more or less opened up. The more important part is that they are half a level ahead and are closing in on level 10. So if that hits during this push, then they can already go for that. There's the hook, the follow up from Anduin, nicely done. Bot lane pressure also against play, so that's there. And they are getting closer to level 10. Valera is trying to move in once more. They shift their focus into the mid lane for now. And there's the heroic ability on the side of team Smoke Bomb and the Light Bomb. There's a lot of bombs here. And Gorge. Gorge and the Horrify. And they are moving down to the bottom of the map and are saying like, Yep, that fort belongs to us. Thank you very fucking much. Morena is also a little bit low. And they're going for the Light Bomb play here. Uh, Horrify is in. I don't know why they're attacking. Why are they going for this? There's the hit on Uther and he's down. Bishops is trying to get out and he can be very happy that there's no... That Stitches doesn't have the cooldown ready for a hook. If you try to escape with a wave from Sylvanas and Stitches is around and has his hook ready, then you might be in, a tr in trouble. That's an easy hit right there for him. Now we got the Divine Shield. That's definitely going to help them a little bit. And the Mind Control is there too with Thornwood Vines again for Lul Nara. Yeah, Masquerade. Might. Okay, there's the mind control. And Anduin is ruining the play. Anduin is such a D-bag, seriously. Every single time that the team is about to get a kill and they're happy and they're like, Oh my god, we did it. Anduin just comes in and pulls them out. Red Web Weavers are still descending though, so Team Ash was able to get enough gems turned in. But there's the hook! This time Lunara was hit. Immediately we're having the cocoon. If Stitches goes for Gorgi and successfully hits it, then that's going to be a disaster for Lulnara. But as it stands, they were able to make that play. And in the meantime, Hogger gets attacked. Swam Grota is able to move his way out of the fight, though. But the defense is really good for Team Wow. They already dealt with the top web weaver. Now they're dealing with the one in the middle. And the bot lane hasn't even approached the gates yet. So they're doing well. Another hook. This time the Gorge. There's the Horrify. Light Bomb. Yeah, but the timing was a bit off. Divine Shield on Lunara. But Renella is about to die. Utha is gone. Valera dealing with the bot lane still. Five kills to two. Level advantage. That fort is taking way more damage than I expected though. Ooh. Considering how solid the defense of Team was at the beginning. In the mid and top lane. It's a bit of a surprise. Fights in the middle are also not stopping. Another hook, another hit, and good damage from Ultralisk in particular, who's by now at 29 stacks on his level 1. 24,000 damage for Gul'dan, 23,000 for Sylvanas. Valera, by the way, with 10k damage. And he has a level 13 talent already. Okay, try to go for the mind control again, but can you save Masquerade? Nope. They cannot. And now the next question. Can they get those gems? Dino's moving in to try and grab them. And he does. Most of them have been risk recovered here. So still good move by Team Ash. That gives them a numbers advantage. And maybe even another turn in. They don't quite have enough gems yet. But they're getting close. 
Penguin gets attacked too. Banana H is on the run. And gets out. That was still a bit scary. If he dies with the gems that he holds, that's, uh, that's a problem. Instead, we have Dainu now turning in. So the blue team gets another turn in. And that's a real nice push for them. Because they have a level 10. Sorry, level 13 advantage. And in addition to that, the objective. So they can start pushing with this a little bit. The gap isn't that big. Team Ash should soon get their own level 13 talent. But at least initially, they have to fall back a bit and can't really meet that attack in the middle of the map. Just take it easy. And of course, with level 13, that was hit a bit earlier by Masquerade's team. Stitches now also has the extended range on the hook, which is super important here because it threatens the red team even further in all of these engages. The fort falls. That's the second one to go down. In the mid lane, Bishops has defended against the Web Weavers with the rest of the team. Another hook. Masquerade misses it. A lot of blind hooks right now. Just on the off chance that you're able to connect with someone. But they want another key. They want another fort. So they're going for the fort in the middle now too. Ultralisk with a lot of fell flames here. But it's still... Yeah. They're always baiting those hooks. But Svam Grota is probably... Wow. He makes it. He's cutting it close every single time with his hogger. But he gets out. 32 stacks for Gul'dan. It's getting closer and closer to completing this one. <laughs> Not bad. Not bad. Good idea on the hook on the camp. But yeah, couldn't work that one in. So they're delivering the few gems that they still hold. Masquerade with the one gem is immediately getting pinged here. It's like, what are you doing? Secure the place. Sit at the side. Grand vision. And they get it! There's the gorge! And now they just have to go for the immediate silence and that's a kill. Light bomb! And he bunkers up. They burn that one down, but it's not over yet. That's the team fight. Lunara isn't here yet. Lunara is not here. Another hook, another hit. Morenas might be in trouble. He gets the Divine Shield. Dino is still doing the work against the Squishies. And Blaze is isolated and killed. Pushed into the wall, quite literally. Another shockwave. And he has the follow-up from Dino. They nearly killed Denaru too. But boy, these hooks for Masquerade. That one was absolutely on point. And they nearly have level 16, so they're getting closer and closer, not only to another turn in, but they also have an open shot at the fort in the middle, maybe even a move for the for the boss. They have the Runes Affliction now with level 16 for Gul'dan. They also got the Glyph of Faith, so even more plays by Anduin to ruin the day of the red team. And yeah, they're looking great here. But Dainu gets caught, and if Anduin isn't close enough, the helping hand! The helping hand by Masquerade. I was waiting for Banana H to come in with another pull, but nope. Here it is. Level 16. Turn it on Spam Corona's side. And Jesus. The plays again by them. 15,000 damage on Dino. It's not really too much, honestly. Hogger is ahead of him. Stitches is ahead of him. They get another one. And they... Okay. <laughs> Kidnap combo attempt. <laughs> they literally go for a kidnap combo attempt. Denado gets attacked. And he has to horrify as Valera gets saved by Anduin. But the reaction of Team Ash is really good. They reacted to that nearly perfectly. They still might lose uh, an Uberak though. Now it's Sylvanas that dies first. I gotta say, some of these plays on both teams are super clutch. The fort falls, that's unfortunate, but Team Ash, they were able to save a new Brock, But they are always on the back foot here. <laughs> Fucking troll. Masquerade is coming in. And it's just, yep, yeah, hooking him. Blue Web Beavers are going to be descending once again, and they're also going for the boss at the same time. Team Ash, I don't think they're going to contest this. They don't have Sylvanas, and they don't have the level 16 talent. So there's that. The troll continues. Seven kills to three. Dino, he takes it. He sneaks in the boss. And now they got the double whammy here. Web Weavers moving down. And in addition to that, the boss to level 16 talents on both sides. That kill would be amazing if the red team can get it. But it doesn't seem likely. Nope. Here's the counterplay again. The hook. Dino, careful. Dino's alive. They go for Morenas. He has to bunk up. And he does. But the boss is still pushing. And while this fight is raging on, that top lane is suffering. Yeah, that top lane is really, really suffering. So right now, the wall is already destroyed. Uh, Maitrai eats the entire wave. Has to be very careful. He is going to die to it. 
But while the top is pushed by all of this, we have the rest of the blue team move into the middle. So one keep is already getting intact at the mid lane. They're looking for more or less the same play here. 17 kill, uh, sorry, seven kills, two, three. And yeah, they're going for a double keep play up at the top. This one might still fall to the boss. Got to get a bit close. But here in the middle, I try for another one. Swam Grotta, the mind control, doesn't properly connect. And now they're on the back foot again. Bot lane gets pressure too. Dino is there with the web weavers. Keep in the middle has gone down. Masquerade is low. And finally, they get that kill. But Dino doesn't give a shit. He's playing PvE right now. Wants to go for the second keep. And this one is going to fall. So while they're losing two heroes in the middle. Anduin and Stitches. Dino delivered the hit on the final. On the keep at the bottom. And now he wants to go for the one here. Yeah, maybe not. He is trying to save his own skin here. Okay. Might be able to get out too. Lunara died and so did Hog at the bottom of the map. But Dino is still on the run. Mind control! He wants to go for the kill! The horrify! And they get him! <laughs> Sylvanas gets wrecked. Ultralisk moved in. It's a bit of a bait. Masterful bait by Dino. Two keeps gone. And the last remaining one is incredibly low. And of course by now they are so unbelievably close to level 20. That they should be able to rely on a two level advantage for quite a long time. Valyria is, by the way, the only one that hasn't died yet. Like, literally the only hero in this game that hasn't died even once. So, yep, not bad. Masquerade still doing his thing down at the bottom of the map. We already have Dino playing this one out. Level 16, uh, sorry, level 20 talents are now in play for team. With the elusiveness, we got the sensor and also the master hooker for Masquerade. Yeah, Team Wap, they are just a little bit too strong. Even with a draft like this, they are dominating here. Now, to be also quite fair, there were a lot of the top teams that have not participated in today's qualifier. Chili Donuts, the Hardos, and Yule Board, all three of them not playing in uh, today's event. We're going to see them very likely in the next one, but just to highlight that real quickly. So Team Ash definitely a bit outclassed in that little encounter here. And they are being chased all over the map at this point. Yep. 20 to 19. They might just make it to 20. Not enough gems anytime soon for another web weaver wave for the blue team. Mm. <laughs> and Uvara, careful. There's the hook. There's the gorge. Can they follow up? Maybe even with the horrify here. Yeah? Has already locked down a temp, but the divine shield was ready. Instantly, instant divine shield. Not even waiting for the hit points to drop. He was just like, all right, I know the drill by now. If I don't divine shield you, then that one's going to be over for, uh, for our main tank. Valyra really wants that top keep, doesn't she? So Dino is looking around there. And the rest of the team is moving in as well. Masquerade just wants these hooks. At this point, you just want to hit another hook. The keep is down. 17 minutes in, of course, all of the lanes are now pushing. So I'm Grotta still trolling around a bit down here. Damage account, look at this, 50,000 and 2. 50,000 and 2 for Gul'dan. Sylvanas is a bit ahead of him, though. 51,000 for her. But yeah, they're played to a wall. They're literally just sitting in their base now, trying to get to level 20. That's all that this is about. Play as passive as you can, wait for 20, then try to push out and deliver two turn -ins. That's what they're hoping for. I mean, technically, they could get nearly three turn-ins in a row if they just win some big fights. They would have enough gems. So, this is their chance. They got redemption. They now have also the Dark Lady's Call. But they need these turn-ins. They need them now. But you can, as you can see here, the second they hit 20, they started to move out. They know it's the only thing that they can do. Leonardo already getting murdered a bit by Valera, dropping low very quickly. There's the Horrify. They hope for Blaze and they don't get the kill because Uther is ready with another Divine Shield. He's still not safe. Ooh, careful. And Nubra, oh, the damage from Gul'dan. Gul'dan with the damage and the Pog play by Hogger. Ding, 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 ding. Painballing around between them. Bishop's low, Denado nearly dying, everybody on the run. Renella, Silvanas dies, he's still alive, but he's not gonna make it here, obviously. So yeah, they are just trolling around a little bit. It's a little dance party that they are celebrating. 
Renella, he is a very <laughs> spray game on point. I like it. Lunara is dead too, as these guys are just trolling around a little bit. Obviously, Team Ash knows exactly what's going on here. They know that they are done for. So, Usa is starting to take the fall down, trying to go for the honorable Sudoku here. And he falls eventually. Has his redemption still up, though? Has his redemption still up, but the core is already gone, so this is it. Once again, Team wah, locks in another victory at a qualifier for the X Cup winter. Thank you everybody for watching the video today. I hope that you enjoyed the show and the commentary. And keep in mind that the spoiler protection that is going to run for the rest of the video is made possible by all the support on Patreon.com. So guys, if you want to support my work, if you want to help me start new projects and keep the spoiler protection in place, please consider heading over to Patreon.com slash Kaldor. There's also a link in the YouTube description and check that out. Thanks in advance and see you guys next time with more esports coverage here on Color TV. Have a great day.